What's up guys, I'm Uriel Soto. Now in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a mobile app menu using Elementor. Now you can do this on the pro version and the free version, so it's gonna work for everyone. Now let me go ahead and show you guys what we're gonna be building here. So this is my hiking club website. I ended up adding a mobile app menu to this. I have made a tutorial on how to build this website in case you guys are wondering, but let me go ahead and go into mobile view so you guys can view this menu that we're gonna be building. So this is a menu here. Right here, right at the bottom, we have home, map, call, and email. Of course, you can add whatever um, menu you guys want to add to this, but it's all completely responsive, and it pretty much works on um, pretty much most devices here. We have iPhone X, um, you can do Pixel 2, if you have Galaxy, you can tell it all works perfectly. And I even, I even uh, did this on tablet as well. I just kind of did it briefly on tablet because I don't think this is going to be used that much on tablet, but if you want to use it on tablet, you can, but that's completely up to you. Now that's pretty much what we're going to be building there. If you guys do have any questions, just go ahead and comment down below. And if you guys do end up enjoying this video, make sure to squash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. I hope you guys enjoy. So let's begin. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be building the mobile app menu on my home page, but I would recommend you guys build it on your header builder just so then you guys can get the, the mobile app menu showing up on every single page and you don't got to do it for each individual page. So that's what I would recommend, but just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to just going to build it on my home page. If you don't have Elementor Pro and you don't have access to the header builder, you can just build it on each page. Or just build it on the home page or wherever you build it and then just copy it to every single page if you don't have Elementor Pro. But if you do, I would highly suggest you build it on the header builder. Um, but I'm going to be building it on my home page. So anyway, let's uh, go ahead and finally begin here. So this is going to be on mobile. So I'm going to just going to go straight to mobile. And we're going to begin to build this. I'm going to start from the bottom here. I'm going to add a new section. And I'm just going to have it one column. And then I'm going to go ahead and just add some CSS to the section here. So what I would do is go ahead and click on your section and then head down to the description and I will have this CSS for you. The first one here is, is our uh, mobile section. So this is the CSS that we're going to be grabbing here. And I'll have this down in the description, probably on my website that you guys can just grab it and paste it into your section. I'm trying to make this really easy for you guys. So from here, go to your section, click on your section, go into advanced, go into custom CSS, and then go ahead and paste it in there. Now, if you don't have Elementor Pro and you don't have access to this custom CSS, don't worry about that. What we can do instead is I'm going to go ahead and remove this we can go over here to advance and we can just add a class name to this. And then I'm going to call this um, app dash menu. And we can just go ahead and click update. If you do have Elementor Pro, you can just skip over this part. And then you can just go into customize, go into advanced settings, and just type in app dash menu. Type in your curly brackets. And then grab the CSS code. Except for you guys, you're not going to have selector here. So we're just, I'm going to, I'm going to exclude selector. And you know what? I'm gonna just going to grab what's in between here because I already have my curly brackets. In here. I'm going to paste it right in here. Don't worry. I'll have this down in the description. You guys don't have to worry about that. So that's just how I would go about doing that. Um, but I'm going to remove this for now and I'm going to start off with the pro version. And just add it in there. Let me go ahead and grab that here again. Paste this right in here. There we go. So it's going to move it all the, all the way to the bottom. That's fine. That works perfectly. So just move to a good spot wherever you'd want that. If you want, if you want, um, just so then you don't have this moving around for now, you can remove the fixed. Let's go ahead and just do that. Remove the fixed and we'll add it later. So then we can customize this really quick and it just makes it easier for us. All right, so now that we have that added, um, you know what? If you guys do want to change the color of your background, let me just go over that real quick. So I'm pretty much using um, Glossmorphism website and I just grabbed 
um, some CSS code from here. If you guys want to generate your own little gloss um, gloss morphism effect, you can grab it from here and then just remove border, uh, remove the border, border radius and the box shadow. That's what I did here, as you can tell. So that's how I got this, uh, this background with this blur effect. All right, so now I'm going to go into my elements here and I'm going to search for um, icon it should be icon box. So go ahead and grab this icon box and just drag it right in here. And of course, it is kind of big, but that's fine. We're just going to adjust this here and we're going to adjust some settings. So this is going to be our home. I'm going to call this home. And then I'm going to go ahead and just search for a home here. Perfect. And of course, we're going to shrink all this. And I'm going to make the icon color white and the text color white. And then my uh, size I'm going to do, I think we did, let's see here, I might have it down. So my icon spacing is 9 and my icon size. Let's do 20. And then I'm going to do a negative, negative 9 here, negative 9. And then the size of this, uh, probably going to bring that down a little bit more. And then I'm going to bring this to 300. And then I'm going to do an uppercase for all of them. But you don't have to do uppercase. That's just completely up to you how you want to go about doing that. Um, but it is how you can do it. And then we're going to have it just like that. Okay. So then from here, we're going to go in, go into advance on your icon box. Let me add some padding to this. I believe we have some padding on this one. Missing icon box padding. So from the top we do nine, and from the bottom we do nine. so top nine pixels, and from the bottom nine pixels. Don't worry, we'll adjust that other part if we have that. And then go into positioning, and we're gonna do custom. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and set my custom width to sixty-two pixels. Two pixels. Perfect. All right, and then we're gonna go into um, my custom CSS, and I'm gonna add some CSS to my my icon box here. Now, of course, I'll give you guys, I'll show you guys how to do that with the free version. But let me go ahead and grab my CSS code. This is my CSS code for my icon box, as you can tell. My box is that right in here. And let's just go ahead and remove that bottom spacing. I that for what's going on there. Not this one. I know that for a fact. Might be some. I can remove adding to. This. We have negative nine. Rotate the bottom, and let's set the let's set the spacing to zero. There we go. That should be set to zero. Make sure your title spacing is set to zero. Perfect. All right, and. Let me go ahead and show you guys how you can add the CSS snippet in case you're using the free version. I'm gonna grab this and on your icon box, if you're using the free version, you can just type in, uh, type in icon box, it's fine. <laughs> icon dash box and just add it to your CSS class. Click update once you add that. Go in here and then just type in icon dash box and then go ahead and paste that CSS snippet and then just go ahead and remove we're going to remove this selector part and this other curly bracket have it just like this and I'll have this down in the description for the free version I'll go ahead and separate this uh, from the free and the pro and then just go ahead and update that I'm not going to update that because I already have it uh, in here so I don't need to do that anymore alrighty now we have that set up but I want there to be a hover effect whenever I hover over my icon as well. So I'm going to go into style on my icon box. And then from here, we're going to change the color of our icon. And I want to grab this color here. So I'm going to go back to advance, grab the color I've used. I kind of forgot. And it's this one. And then we're going to go back to style. 
that. Change the color here. Oops. Let's do hover effect, sorry. Change the color on hover effect. Now when we hover over this, it's gonna change a different color. So that's perfect. Um, the other thing is I wanna add some spacing to this box here. And of course we're gonna add four more icons or three more, sorry, three more icon boxes. But let me click on this column, click on your column and then go to advance and the padding do about 10 from the top bottom and then now all we have to do it's really simple we have to just duplicate this one into three times the so one two and three there we go let's so all set there now, if you do want to change the color of this um, icon box, the background, at least, if you want to change the color of the background, you can go in here and I have the background here. So you can just change it to whatever you'd like. I'm still using, um, I did use a gloss morph morphs website to get that. So I did use one of those. So you guys can go in here and generate it. It's, uh, I'll have this down in the description so you guys can check that website out. Anyway, I have done videos on that in the past. So if you guys are probably familiar with that and you guys already know. All right. So now I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and click on these and I'm gonna rename them. So I think I'm gonna do, let's see, I did put it up here. I did home, map, call, and email. So this one is gonna be map. And then I'm gonna search for map here on my icons and I'm gonna grab this. Grab that and use that icon there. And then I think the next one was call. So we're gonna do call. Just gonna type in phone here. Icon phone. Oops, that was not the wrong one. That was not the right one. Sorry about that. So let me go back and do this one was uh, map. Editing the wrong one there. And then this one call. Oh. Phone. And let's click on this one here, the last one, and let's change that one to, I believe that was email. Let's do email. And let's type in envelope. And we're gonna choose, we're gonna choose from here. There we have it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click update. And of course, there's still a few more things that we need to do. I still need to align it. Now we probably see it down here, of course, but we only want this to show up on mobile, first of all. So let's make sure we click on this. And let's let's go to um, responsive and let's hide this on tablet and desktop. Now you can show this on tablet, but I'm gonna hide it there. I just on it, and then now it's gonna be gone. But I do want it sticky, so let's go ahead and just make that sticky. And you know what? While we're here, let's go ahead and al align this. All right. So click on your column, go into layout. And then vertical, we want this to be to the middle. It's not going to do anything yet because that's just top to bottom. And then from side to side, which is horizontal, we want that to be in the center. That's how you would center that. Very simple. And that's why I like using this method instead, instead of using a bunch of columns. It just makes everything more um, complicated when you use a bunch of columns. Some stuff aren't as that responsive and you have issues. That's why I'm just going to do it this way. It's a lot easier, in my opinion. All right. And then we just got to make this sticky and we're all set. So click on your section. Go into custom CSS and we're going to go ahead and do position and I do, I'm going to do fix a fixed position. So now it's fixed. Update. Go to our website and right click it and click inspect so we can do this and we can see how it looks. There we go. Now look at that. That's looking super nice. Now we can try different sizes. Right now I have it on iPhone X, but I can do uh, Galaxy S5. Let's see how it's going to look like on the Pixel 2. Moto G4, which I don't think people use that anymore, but maybe they do. But you know what I'm just realizing? Now look at this. You see that whenever we go through certain sections, you'll notice that it happens right here, right? Right there. So we need to just um, fix fix our um, our Z index here. So 
go into your home, make sure you click on your section, go into advance, and on your Z index, just set this to five. And now if we update this, we shouldn't have that issue anymore. There we go. Perfect. And I mean, the main ones that you want to see are probably the iPhones. iPhones are always usually pretty good. That's what everyone uses the most. Two extra large. So everything looks pretty good except for the fold, which I don't really use a fold anyway. So um, that's fine. And I don't think that many that that important. But if you did want to adjust that, that's fine. Um, but as you can tell, it's all set. Let me go ahead and see how responsive this is, though. I can do. So even if you did want to do tablet, you can. I mean, as you can tell, if this was tablet, it would still work out. So you know what? We can even turn it on on tablet if we wanted to. Go back in here. Let's go to responsive. And let's go ahead and turn on tablet. I want to kind of speed up this video here. I don't want to spend too much time on this. So there we go. So if we, if, if we wanted to, we would just have to adjust that, I think. Yeah, we would have to adjust that on tablet. So I probably wouldn't even go for that, to be honest. I'll just leave it as is for right now. And that would probably be a whole nother video if I would want to do tablet, but um, honestly just wouldn't really go there with tablet. I mean, it's really, if you didn't want, you know what, if you did want to do tablet, let me just do it really quick. How you would go about doing it. It's really simple. Actually, you'd go in here, um, go into, go into positioning, and then we'd have to just set this up to custom. And then just literally just adjust these however you would like, just like how we did earlier. And you pretty much just have to go in here. You probably want to make the, um, you probably want to make your icon smaller, you know, literally just like this, guys. So it's not really, not, and then just go into here, your column, and make sure this is set to the middle, everything set to the center. Really simple. So it's not really that much of an issue. I just don't want to spend that much time on it. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. You guys can just adjust your icon here. And then just adjust your text size and look at that. Then you can add some, maybe some spacing from the top to this one if you wanted to within that. Um, that, you know, you just go about adjusting that however you would like. Um, and then just space this out here and you can go and adjust that. And it shouldn't be that much of a problem. So. That is how you guys would go about doing it. Like I said, I don't want to spend that much time on it. Uh, but you guys can easily adjust those. You guys can make them smaller. I'd probably make those a lot smaller just in case, but it's really up to you. Um, but that's how you guys would go ahead and adjust those. And you know what, real quick, because I might have forgot something, just in case. I know some of you guys that are just beginning and may, may not know this. Um, you can easily, if we go into, let's go to mobile so we have that better view here. Now, if you want to go ahead and just have people call us right away on your link, just do tell um, colon. And then just do um, your number here. Whatever, whatever your number is, you know, type that in and then they can just click that and call you right away. Um, and then for email, just do email, email to colon. Just do email. Or sorry, it's not email, it's a uh, mail to colon. And then just type in your email, whatever your email is, dot website dot com, website at you know whatever gmail.com, or whatever that may be. And then they can just click on that and email you right away. And also for your call, uh, or you can just link this out to your contact page and then your map. You can just whenever people click on map, just go into Google and type in your location, whatever that may be. And then just grab the link and paste it in here and home you can just link back to your home page that's pretty much it just wanted to go over that really quick just in case you guys don't know how to do that but that's pretty much it for this video if you guys do have any questions on this just feel free to comment down below and i'll definitely try to help you guys out if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to squash the like button for the youtube algorithm and if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any videos i'll catch you guys in the next one